looking back, I can I can only smile because it was it was one of the one of the scariest periods of my life. Um, the single thing I had devoted my life to uh, seemed to be at the very tip of my fingers, and I could lose it. And to be honest, I don't even think it was debt in itself that scared me the most. It was, it was the fact that I was worried that I might never be the same again. I was, I was, you know, I was worried I was going to change in ways that I couldn't control. And um, that was my fear, honestly. And so... Um, as at a time where, when I got the results and went through the surgery, I came out of surgery and um, I could talk after the first day, second day, but the third day upwards, I was struggling to form words in my mouth. And um, it, was, it was scary because um, some part of me, you know, knew it was transient. However, some part of me refused to, you know, admit it was transient. It was more of the battle of just doctor part in one side and then the normal person at the other side that really cannot separate themselves from the emotions that they are feeling. But it changed me a lot because that was a period where I really got to understand how, how important people are and your support system is to your journey to recovery. We, 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 cannot, we cannot ignore the fact that a support system is vital. And I was humbled because, yes, my, my, my videos get to millions of people, but at a time when, you know, yes, and uh, at, at a time when I was at my most vulnerable, I don't think we're up to 10, you know, but these were people that really cared deeply about me. Uh, yes, not so works as someone was changing, you know, some narrative about healthcare in Africa, but that was not the focus at that time. Um, it also made me realize that sometimes overworking can be a, a coping mechanism. Yes. And um, this is new to me at that point, because as at a time when I got the diagnosis, the next day I called my team and I said, let's shoot, let's shoot for the whole of uh, December. So we, we sat down in one day and we shot videos that were supposed to last us for one month. It was, it was a grueling experience, but I, I noticed that I was trying to run away from the fear and the uncertainty I was feeling. And so rather than, you know, really sit down and process what I was going through. I refused and, you know, buried myself in work. So it's a coping mechanism that is, quote unquote, you know, not so healthy because as at the time when I really needed to make that decision, which was when we're supposed to get into the theater, I was afraid again. And, you know, I almost did not get into the theater because that was where the reality of everything actually came on me. At some point I was considering, you know, um, let me just wait for it to grow, and, you know, that's at a point when I'm unconscious or, you know, having a seizure, then they can take it out. But um, that people are important. Your socials, your, your, your support system is important. And the decision to actually have the surgery in Nigeria was part of my belief system about Nigeria and its healthcare, because a lot of people were shocked that I actually had the surgery in Nigeria. Why didn't I go to India? Why didn't I go to, you know, um, 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 Dubai? Why didn't I go to the US? Uh, not so you can afford it. Might as well just, you know, just go. But I, 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 I have spent a, a couple of years before that shouting about the healthcare in Nigeria to Nigerians. And as at a time when I needed it the most, I would be a hypocrite if I go out of, out of the country. So, um, it made me realize that, you know, um, keeping, keeping to your words is not actually a very easy thing because I was almost this close. And so um, what I've decided to do 
after that is to actually appreciate humanity more. People, people are important. Sometimes we get so into the work and so into the mission that we lose the people behind, you know, the mission. So I make our time to stop, talk to people on the streets when they reach out to me, no matter how busy my schedule is. If you want a smile, I will give you a smile. And um, yeah, so something happened at the mall a one particular time. I was working with my wife, dealing with this, you know, difficult diagnosis that we just got. And someone walked up to me and said, oh, Apoko, I must take a picture with you. And I looked up at him and I said, I don't think this is a good time. And he says, forget that you're good. You know how Nigerians are. Nigerians are very boisterous yeah, yeah. in your face. Yeah. And he was like, oh, no, forget that you're a good time. Yeah, you must take this picture today. And I knew that he said that in good faith. He wasn't doing it because mm. he wanted to be malicious. And I mm. took off at him. You know, I used cuss words that I probably am not proud of repeating. You know, screamed the whole mall down and... I could see the confusion on his face. He was wondering, I'm just asking for a picture. Why is this guy going off on me? And um, looking at that and seeing just how much impact it had on me, simply because I refused to process what I was going through at that moment, um, changed my perspective towards myself. Um, I need to be kinder to myself. I need to be kinder to the people around me. I need to appreciate people more. Um, yeah. Overworking can be a copy mechanism. So yeah, I'm still learning those lessons as I 